Today, I will explain and demonstrate the process of nuclear fusion inside high-mass stars. The nuclear fusion reactions that power stars occur when atomic nuclei smash together so hard that they stick. However, nuclei tend to repel each other because they are positively charged. They contain only positive protons and neutral neutrons, and like charges repel, just like north-north or south-south poles of a magnet. This repulsion creates an electromagnetic barrier that prevents nuclear fusion under most conditions. Even at the high temperatures found deep in the cores of stars like our sun, atomic nuclei don't have enough energy to crash through the electromagnetic barrier. Instead, they rely on quantum tunneling to sneak through the barrier into the region where the strong force dominates. In other words, quantum tunneling is what makes nuclear fusion possible in stars like our sun, which means that life on Earth could not exist without it. Overall, the key to nuclear fusion is pushing the positively charged nuclei close enough together for the strong force to overcome electromagnetic repulsion. The key ingredient that will make this happen is high temperatures. At high enough temperatures, a star's core can fuse heavier nuclei with one another. For example, fusing carbon to oxygen creates silicon, fusing two oxygen nuclei creates sulfur, and fusing two silicon nuclei generates iron. Some of these heavy element reactions release free neutrons, which may fuse with heavy nuclei to make rarer elements. The high temperatures inside stars are vital because the nuclei must collide at very high speeds if they are to come close enough together to fuse. Quantum tunneling is important to this process. Each time the core depletes the elements it is fusing, it shrinks and heats until it becomes hot enough for other fusion reactions. Meanwhile, a new type of shell fusion ignites between the core and the overlying shells. Near the end, the star's central region resembles the inside of a jawbreaker, with layer upon layer of shells fusing different elements. Now let's begin with the demonstration. In front of me, I have a tub of water with a ball in the center and an LED light. The water represents gravitational contraction, the strong force of gravity compacting the star's core, the ball represents the core of the star, and the LED light will help give a visual as the core temperature increases through the process of nuclear fusion. Our 25 solar mass star has just been upgraded from a protostar to a proper star that lies on the upper left end of the main sequence on the HR diagram. Its position on the HR diagram means our star is incredibly massive and blindingly luminous. The core temperature has finally exceeded 10 million Kelvin, which means it is hot enough for hydrogen fusion to efficiently run through the CNO cycle. The outward pushing pressure from the fusion process meets the inward pulling force of gravity and finds equilibrium. A star is officially born. Our star will fuse hydrogen for approximately 1 million years. When the core heats to 200 million Kelvin, the core will begin to fuse helium. The core will fuse helium for about 500,000 years. When the core helium is exhausted, fusion will again cease and the star will once again go out of energy balance. The core, now made of the carbon produced by helium fusion, will begin to shrink once more under the crush of gravity. Once the core exceeds 600 million Kelvin, the carbon core will begin to fuse. In our high-mass star, carbon fusion may last about 600 years. When the core carbon has been depleted, the core again begins to collapse, shrinking and heating once more until it can fuse a heavier element. When the core temperature exceeds 1 billion Kelvin, the neon core will begin to fuse. Neon fusion will take place for about one year. When the core temperature exceeds 1.5 billion Kelvin, the oxygen core will begin to fuse. Oxygen fusion will take place for six months. When the core temperature hits about two to three billion Kelvin, the silicon core will begin to fuse. Silicon fusion will take place for about one day. During the star's final few days, iron begins to pile up in a silicon fusing core. The inert iron core will not fuse because iron has the lowest mass per nuclear particle. This means iron cannot release energy through fission or fusion. This marks the quickly approaching death of our star. High mass stars fuse increasingly heavy elements until they have exhausted all possible fusion sources. When fusion finally stops for good, in other words, when we reach iron, gravity causes the core to implode suddenly. The implosion of the core causes the star to self-destruct in an explosion called a supernova. This will create a black hole. From the time our star was born and died, it only lived for about 6 million years, which is barely anything in the grand scheme of the universe. When it comes to high mass stars, always remember, they live fast and die young. Thank you for watching.